Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we have a sponsored video from Editor X, and this is basically a new app. It's actually from Wix.com. I'm sure you, a lot of you have seen their videos, but this is a really robust tool that's in beta right now that you can check out for free. And it's basically, I would say it's probably the most robust visual website builder that I've personally ever seen uh, because they allow you to actually use a visual site builder to structure flexbox based positioning elements and user interfaces as well as the CSS grid and I have to say it's very fun and that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to build a layout uh, with just some of the features of Editor X because there are many. You can actually build dynamic apps with it. I was really impressed, especially coming from a company like Wix, which really uh, is traditionally catered to your average Joe who doesn't know anything. But even uh, developers who have worked with and CSS, they can actually benefit with this. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. All right, so after you create your free Editor X account at editor, editorx.com, if I can talk, uh, and you log in, you'll be presented with a similar UI to this. Uh, obviously, you won't have any other sites, but basically find the area where you would create a new site. They make that very obvious and easy. And it first asks um, just to know a little bit about the site to kind of give you a starting point. Uh, what kind of website do you want to create? I'm just going to put like portfolio and then we can choose, you know, how do you want to actually start? Do you want to start from scratch, which is what we're going to do. However, you can scroll through all of these uh, predefined templates and you can see at the bottom here is a small button, see all design expressions as they're called. Um, but for us, we're just going to start with a blank canvas. Otherwise, if you choose one of these, it's going to start you with what you see here. So you can kind of preview them by clicking view and it'll show you kind of like uh, what it looks like on a desktop or tablet or phone. All right, so you can choose, you know, to start from there if you wish. But let's go ahead and start from blank. I like this loading graphic here, by the way. It's kind of cool. Anyhow, so here it is. So I'm going to uh, make the, uh, this a little bit larger so we can see everything clearly. I might go a little bit larger than that. And what we have, Initially, what I'm going to do here is just really quickly go over the UI and like uh, kind of like how it's structured. So here in the middle, we could see that we have uh, what's really just kind of like the canvas area. This is the actual site, uh, what it will look like. And I, this is where we're going to mainly be, you know, having all of our work done. As you can see, they kind of give you, it's not completely blank. They start you off with a, a header and like a nav bar. Uh, but you could still delete that if you wanted to. Outside of this area though, here, up here we have this little toolbar um, where you can add elements. So there's a lot of stuff here that you can look at. Um, so for instance, I, you can quickly add you know things that are very common like UI elements like text, paragraph buttons, etc. cetera. Um, there's just a bunch of other things that you can do, but I'm not gonna get into those just yet. But this is just like the, the area where you add stuff to your layout. Um, over here is layers. So if you're familiar with uh, other design applications such as Adobe Photoshop, uh, who basically invented the concept of layers, um, or Sketch, or Adobe XD, or Figma, um, it just works in the same way. Um, they're kind of just grouped up into various sections based on what's inside of them. All right, and also over here, we have what are called masters. So think of masters as being sections of uh, repeatable, repeatable content. So anything that will be present in multiple pages, uh, like a header, um, or like a footer, anything like that will appear here. And you can define here as well. Um, site pages, obviously you're gonna want more than just a home page. although not always, sometimes you have a one page or you know, a one page site, that's fine. But most for most people, they're gonna wanna have multiple pages and you can create them here. And then also we have what's called a theme manager where you can quickly change up the topography and the colors associated with the given layout over here. And then finally, we have uh, this uh, robust app market where you can add all sorts of functionality to um, your, your site. So you can have uh, pricing plans. I, it's all categorized. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but you can have like uh, visitor analytics for analyzing your traffic. Just a whole bunch of stuff that you can go through on your own. So it is quite capable. All right. 
Um, next up over here in this section, let's go ahead and toggle that off. Uh, we have which current page is selected. We also have uh, the viewports, all right? So these are the, the devices. And as you can see, if I make this a little bit larger, I uh, edit for uh, 1000 pixels and up. So this is like a desktop or laptop. Uh, this right here is for like tablets. And then this right here is for phones. All right, so what's really cool is you can even add your own breakpoints, your own custom breakpoints. I'm not going to, but just understand that you can if you wish. And then finally, if we select an element over here in the right hand panel is the property inspectors. Very simple, um, a very standard convention for design applications to have the, the all the individual modifiable, I uh, you know, uh, sections for your 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 elements and this all happens to be basically uh, for every element you select it's just a visual editor for CSS properties so that's really cool so you don't have to work with CSS code you're working with these uh, these visual ways of, of quickly um, adjusting things plus you don't have to necessarily know CSS and the, all the properties and the correct values to use this stuff over here so we'll get into that as well um, so Let's go ahead and real quickly, let me deselect this. Let's pull, pull this in just a bit. All right. So as you can see, when we bring this in, it's letting us know our current width right here. Um, and obviously, if we go down uh, to l low enough, we'll hit the next breakpoint. So that's another way that we can switch between these three breakpoints or any other custom breakpoints that you create. So let's go ahead and just create something very simple um, for basically like a home page. I'm going to leave this section up. Now, this right here, this little sample logo right here, again, when, when you click most elements outside of just having this property inspector over here, you do also have this little floating toolbar right here as well. And what you select can, cha uh, can change uh, this toolbar. So for like uh, an image, you might have different properties here. Um, so for this one, like you could change the vector art. Uh, obviously, that's not going to show here in the menu. It just says manage menu. So they're all they're contextual, right? So if we wanted to change this, change vector art, we click on that, and you can insert like their their custom vector graphics here, or you can upload your own SVG. Like if you have your own logo in SVG format, which you should definitely have. Um, we're not going to change that though. We're just going to leave this one here. Um, right here, like it says, manage menu. I'm going to show you real quickly just how this works, and it's very simple. Um, as you can see, choose a menu to display. So you can create, you know, multiple different menus. Like maybe you want to have a different menu in your footer as opposed to your header. Um, for us, how exactly would we add? Uh, oh, you can also add a drop down here. I didn't notice that uh, before. Um, but what we can do is, let's say, I uh, all of your pages in your site, they would be listed here, but we only have one page was the home page. But I do want to show you how you can add other ones. So you can click just to create uh, a link item right here. So which page? Well, we could say home this, or we could just go to web address. So we can make it go to HTTP um, designcourse.com, and we'll open that in a new window, hit done. And then we can give the anchor text right here, the label of the actual link. And we'll just say um, about us. I don't know, something like that. And obviously, it adds it right like that. So of course, you have other things that you can change, like the design of this area. You have fill and opacity, corner, shadow, text, spacing. This is something that shows up in a lot of the elements that you select. Um, you can add animations to it. I uh, which are predefined right here, and you can even customize these. Very cool. Um, and then also, you can copy these, uh, the properties from Breakpoint as well. For now, we're just gonna leave this section as is. So, the way a layout is structured here in Editor X is everything is, is structured into sections, as they're called. You can add a new section down here by clicking this button. You can add section up there. You can also move sections around. Uh, so let me just show you, if I create another section and just make it a blank one, we have two sections now. And so what if I wanted to move this section up on top of that one? Well, we just simply click on this little menu here and just choose move up and that will move it up. And you'll see how that works. It's not quite obvious because they're both white, but you'll see how that works going on. And by the way, if you want to undo something, control Z, 
and you can keep going back as many times as you want. All right, so you have to you have to ask yourself, what do I want in this section, right? So you have options. You can start from scratch and drawing out uh, different containers, um, or you can come over here under this plus section right here, and you have what are called sections. So you can just create entirely, or, or rather just uh, select entirely predefined sections, and there's a lot of them. And then we also have uh, what are called layout tools. And so you can create uh, these container boxes. This is kind of if you're doing stuff from scratch. Um, they also have what are called layouters, all right? So kind of interesting name, but basically they're just kind of like skeleton slash prototype sections uh, with predefined columns and or rows, and they're automatically responsive. All right, so it takes some of the work out. So it's basically the middle ground between doing something 100% custom, which is what we're gonna do for this section, but also the opposite, of course, being these predefined sections up here, which has all the, the colors and pictures and stuff, which the pictures themselves are customizable. Um, so what we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna structure this in such a way um, that we're doing it custom for this top section. So what we can do is when we close, click on, um, this uh, area right here, change design. Uh, you can change the background, by the way. Um, but we can also, if we select this, we can go ahead and click what's called apply grid. Or if we click here, we could choose a section layout where it's just blank. And this is a blank section already. Or you can use a grid or a layouter, if that makes sense. So for us, we're going to use a grid. All right, so I'm gonna click grid. And when we choose that, we can choose kind of like this, uh, we have a selection from these predefined um, little grid templates, I guess you can call them. Um, you can have like two by one, which means two columns. Here's just one row, three columns, four. Um, and they're, they're, they're also at the very end customizable as well. So we're just gonna do three a three column, one row grid layout. All right, we're gonna hit apply. All right, so now let's close this out. And we can see we have this, um, we can see these two dashes right here if we select it. Now, if we choose adjust grid and then edit grid, we can see we have what are called one FR. FR is a fractional unit. And if you're not sure what that is, especially if you've never dealt with CSS, don't worry. But if you are familiar with the CSS grid, you will recognize this. And what you can do, this is so cool. I've never seen a really good editor for the CSS grid. Uh, it allows you to adjust you know, visually all of these proportions here at this specific viewport, or you can just type them in as well. So we can go back to one FR and then one FR here. We can do so. You can also uh, increase the grid gaps, for instance. So if we want to have a gap between these grids, we can go ahead and increase this maybe to say 10. Yeah, maybe I'll make that eight. So now we can see those. Let's hit done. And now we can put content into each one of these columns. So let's put a picture into each one of these columns. How would we do that? Well, let's go over here to the plus area and let's go ahead and add. We can choose quick add, or we can choose media down here, and let's just do single images. So they have like a few single images, and that's all we're gonna use, but guess what? You can upload your own images as well, which is what most of you would probably be doing. So let's just choose this mountain graphic, and we're gonna put it right inside of this left, this very first column. And we wanna make sure it's completely inside of it, so, so that then, if we choose stretch, it stretches automatically into this grid section right here. So otherwise, if you don't do that and you have it spanning between two and we increase it, guess what? It's going to take, it's going to to assume that you want it for to span both of those uh, columns. Very, very cool. How it automatically knows to do that based on the position of your photograph. So now let's go ahead and repeat that process. All we have to do is come over here, cl click plus single images, Maybe we'll use this one and we'll expand it. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and add another one. Uh, maybe we'll do this watch, that's a cool graphic. And we'll expand that as well. All right, 
So now we have this cool sort of, uh, I guess you could call it, uh, you know, three column photograph based hero section. Let's put some text on top of it to see what that looks like. So again, we click add, quick add text or a title rather. Let's put a title maybe right here. And for this title, it's uh, just gonna be random. Uh, it's really serious, serious business. And what we can do is, of course, because it's a text layer, we have things that we can, um, you know, we have a, a specific contextual menu, edit text, we can make it larger. Uh, yeah, maybe around, yeah, we'll see. We're gonna have some big, bold, serious text right here. Now, one problem is, notice this, this graphic right here. Um, it's black, so it's black on black. You can't really see it very well, which is a big no-no in UI design. We can click, we can take this image and we can double click into it. And if it were a larger image, I, in a certain dimension, we could um, move things around. Um, but what we can do here is if we select this image here and we take that off and I, the stretch. So now it's at uh, fluid and scale proportionally. If we just increase this to the edges of this container and then double click into it, we can scale this up higher and also position it around so that that black part is not there. And then now we've hit apply and now we can see the title. So that's how you can move around the images, which is very cool, the photographs. Um, it's really serious. Um, let's go ahead and we'll do the same thing with this one. So we'll take this in, we'll scale this up and down here and then we'll double click into it, make it a little bit larger and then push this down. There we go. And then we can go ahead and copy this, Control C, Control V, just to copy and paste. We'll edit the text and this is gonna be a sub headline. Uh, maybe like, now nah, let's go like the 24 and let's also make it not so bold. And we'll have a sub headline. So we'll say in a matter of seconds, you can change your life, whatever that means. Okay, so now we'll push this down. There we go. And then maybe we'll have a call to action button. So a clickable button. Come over here, quick add button. It's already a nicely designed button. It would actually work quite well. But just to show you how you can change the button, for instance, we can come over here to design. So fill color in opacity. All right, well, first, I wanna get rid of the border. It was a black border. So we'll go ahead and take the opacity down on that. And then we'll go ahead back to our design fill color. Let's give it a fill color of not white, but maybe like this blue right here. And then the text color come down here, changed from white or from black to white rather. And then also I want some borders, some corners, like smooth, completely like a pill shape. So we'll do 30 pixels and look at that. How quick was it to do that? Uh, and it's all done by hand and it's all done in a really nice UI that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I like this a lot. All right, so here's our hero section and let's see what it looks like at different devices and we'll see if it's really responsive or not. Now, of course, it's probably not gonna be perfect. Um, it's probably gonna be kind of broken. And so there's a couple things that we can do that make that really easy. So um, right here, we're on desktop. Um, we're gonna go here to around a tablet size and we can see right away our text is breaking and they're overlapping each other. Um, and of course, this is even more exaggerated when we see what happens here. So like I said, there's a few things we can do that will really help fix this problem. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use what are called stacks and stacks use Flexbox. And if you're not sure what Flexbox is, but it's basically a way to um, handle layouts in CSS. And so if I select these three elements right here, we could see we have this stack little floating nav right here. We click stack, nothing seems to change, but it is now a stack and it's using Flexbox to remember the uh, the arrangement between these three elements that I uh, selected. So now if we click here, guess what? They don't overlap anymore. Now, of course, there's still th things that need to be fixed about this, um, but at least they're not overlapping. Here we have our big overly large uh, headline right here. We have our sub headline and then the call to action. They don't overlap each other anymore. So that's what's great about stacks. 
Now, the next thing that's an issue that we could see is when we bring this in, uh, this right here is too large at this size. Um, even right here, it's still a little bit too big, but coming down here, this text is way too big, right? So the way we could uh, fix that issue is we could select on our text element, edit text, and then we can choose this little option right here, scale text. Now, before I click on it, you can see right now it's just a flat default 72 size. Now, when we when we click on scale text, it's gonna give us two different options. Uh, this is a value right here for how small it will be. So at the smallest device you know, viewport, like at a phone, it's gonna be at size 10. And then right up here, it'll be size whatever, you know, 50, for instance. So let's see what happens now. Uh, as we can see, it's it grows and shrinks down in relation to the size that you specified for those two values. So right here, it's really too small in my opinion. So what we'll do, we'll take it, edit text, and we're gonna change this maybe up to like 80. So now if we bring it down, now it's starting to make a little bit more sense, but really I think it's too small right here, right? I mean, that's quite small. So what we can do, edit text, maybe we'll change this to 30. And now it's looking actually pretty good. Okay, so another thing, let's say, let's say for instance, I, we really wanna do the same thing with the, the sub headline as well. So let's, let's do that just for some muscle, muscle memory. So we'll take our edit text, we choose to scale the text, and we're gonna change this here. We'll say change that to uh, 25 and maybe about 15 perhaps. Again, it might be too small. A lot of this is about experimenting. That actually looks pretty good. Of course, we have these other issues, which we're gonna fix the background issue here, but I just wanted to get all this part, this stuff set up correctly. So now it's, it's actually, at least they're not overlapping and they're also scaling. So really, what is happening here though? Notice how this image is taking up the full column but this, these images are not stretching. So what we can do is, notice how these are smaller. We can double click in here, or rather click on it once, and then we're gonna click on stretch. Now it's stretching out all the way as we need it to be. And same thing with this one right here. All right, so now we're actually making progress. All right, so now, Let's say for instance on the uh, mobile viewport, this is kind of looking a little bit crazy, right? Um, it's really, there's too many overlapping elements and it just doesn't look as good as it does say right here where it's only overlapping two of the columns or on desktop as well. So what we can do if we want to make uh, serious adjustments to this, we can go ahead and click on design Fill color and opacity, you just take the opacity all the way down. We'll do the same thing for this one. And then for this element right here, we can actually just uh, take this, we'll unstretch it, except we're going to make this span right here across all three columns. All right, so now let's go ahead, take a look at this. One problem is uh, that one thing I don't like is how this is kind of, this graphic here is kind of coming up on it um, into this start now. Um, so what we can do to fix that, and also look how high this is, like we have this massive amount of white, white space. So one thing that we can do to fix that, which we'll tackle that problem right here, we could take the graphic and we can just pull it up. Now that looks better from a design standpoint, but however, because we made that change, this is going to really go up high, right? So now it broke the layout again, but what we can do to fix that issue is we can take this image, the background image, and notice where it says minimum H for minimum height. So we can make this either a percentage or a pixel value, and maybe we'll make it like around 400 
And that's looking a little bit better. I think maybe we can go ahead and looks like I had uh, internet issues there. It looks like basically what we can do now is just maybe try 500 pixels. Now that looks better for uh, a, a mobile device. Now it's looking and behaving much, much, much better. All right, so I real quickly just changed this text off screen. Um, all you have to do is, though to, to change the text is just to select the text layer, edit text, and you can edit right in line. Um, also change this text and this uh, button text right here. And so we're just gonna pretend this is a photography website. I decided to give it context uh, given the cool photographs that we have here. So now what if we wanna add another section of content beneath this that maybe elaborates on more services that this photographer offers, uh, maybe like in a three column setting. So these, these type of, uh, I guess you can call them UI patterns are very common. And instead of having to create these from scratch, you can actually choose from a predefined set of what are called layouters, which we're gonna add now. So uh, what we can do here with this is, again, remember your layers. So we have what's called a section here we want another section that'll go just underneath this section at the bottom right here. So we're gonna click plus and we're gonna choose layouters. And here's all the different layouters that we have. Um, a lot of them like three column layouts. Uh, here's a layouter, um, just, a, uh, just a variety of different areas that we can choose from. Um, what we're gonna choose is this one right here, I believe. So we're gonna choose this one. Notice it, it came on top, but in order to fix that, all we have to do is select it and just choose move down and now it's down beneath there. You may have to do this on the subsequent uh, viewports, but that's no big deal. Just move down each time, and now everything is, is as it should be, essentially. So here's our layouter section right here. What's really cool is everything is adjustable, is adjustable and customizable about this. So let's say, for instance, the first thing we want to change is the background. I think it's just like a gray color. We get to select the background, and we could choose Change Design, and we have a background uh, fill and opacity over here. So we could change the opacity down to zero, um, or we could just click this, and we can adjust the background this way. Um, so if we choose this color, which is what it currently is, um, we can actually choose add color, and we have access to this color picker right here where we can just change it to anything, anything, and move around the color hues and all that crazy stuff. Very easy to change. So I'm just gonna do, still very light, uh, and, but quite desaturated, but we're gonna work in a little bit color to kind of match this area, but still be a little bit lighter. Um, I think I like that one a lot. This is the color code, a hex color code right there. We're gonna click add, and then now we can change the background of each, of each one of these. Now what's really cool is, yeah, we have three different columns of different content, right? But if we change one thing about one of these columns, it's going to reflect that change in all the other columns. So here's what I mean. We're gonna change this background. As, cause, as we can see, the background of these little cards right here is slightly different than this background. We want them to match. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Uh, we'll select it. We'll choose the design. And you can see we could just take the opacity all the way down. And there we go. And notice how all three of them changed. Now we can still edit the text and those say they essentially stay the same. Uh, but for us, we uh, don't have to do that. So what I wanna do with this is we're gonna take this one, uh, this image, and we're gonna change the image here. So I'm gonna click change image and we can see we can upload media and you can just upload the photographs like the JPEGs or whatever, or GIF files, PNG files for straight from your computer. Uh, or you can drag and drop them as well onto this area. Now I've already uploaded what I wanna use. So I'm just gonna click here from my already uploaded media right here. So uh, for this one, we're just gonna choose wedding and then hit update. And there we go, isn't that very cool? So now we can go ahead and change up these titles. So for instance, this one, we could double click and just change it that way. We'll say weddings. So this photographer handles weddings, they also, handle corporate, corporate photo shoots, and also graduations. All right, now that's very cool. So now, again, change image. Uh, the corporate is next, hit update, see how fast this is. Um, and then finally, we'll also change image here, and then we'll choose graduation, and we'll update it as well. Very, very fun stuff. So we can even change the color of this text, so we can choose edit text, and right here is the color. And we could just choose 
Um, something really light, maybe over here. It's kind of, so it'd be kind of like a watermark, if you will. All right. And you can also move these around uh, by adjusting the position and the docking of everything right here. So for instance, if we wanted, uh, if we hover over it, this means the bottom. Um, if we wanted to, we could take this uh, from less than 20 pixels, maybe to 15 or opposite. I, I, I wanted to go the opposite direction, maybe 30. So you could just push things around however you personally see fit. So I'm gonna leave it at 20 right there. All right, so what about changing like this button color right here very easy so again we go to the modification settings now depending on what type of element you're selecting you may have more options like for instance when we change this background color we can see we only have fill color and opacity but because we have a button we have additional items that we can actually change so I uh, let's go ahead and change the button to make it stand out more so in that case the fill opacity and color Let's just choose this bluish color right here, kind of like that. But now there's not enough, I, what do you call, contrast with where it says click here. So what would we do about that? Well, we come out to text, change the color, we'll use white. Now we can see it much more easily. I, and you can also change the font, the font size, we can make it bold, I think I'll do that. And if we change text, we'll just do schedule a shoot. Or maybe not, I, we could choose schedule shoot, make this wider, or what we could do is just do schedule shoot. There we go, I like that. So now this is all solid, and guess what? With the, with the layouter, it's already responsive for us by default. So notice how it's automatically stacking when you're on a smaller device. Awesome stuff. All right, so let's do yet a, another one. So by the way, just to describe something here a little bit further, notice in this section, uh, this section was made with what's called a layouter, um, but it also has a repeater in here as well. So this repeater, again, like I said, is based on items. It has any number of uh, these items that you can actually add more items to, which is very cool. So for instance, uh, if we select on manage items right here, you can actually duplicate an item where we can have any number of these items. Let's do it a couple more times. That way we have now two columns, which is really cool. And we can go in there and then of course adjust each of them uh, as we see fit. But you can also go ahead and just delete these copies of these items. And what's also cool is you can move them around like that. Very, very powerful. I like that a lot. Um, so coming back here when we add when you go to the plus section in the layout tools again you can just choose straight out flat repeaters or some of these layouters will actually have repeaters built into them um, so let's say for instance I uh, will do one more section uh, let's say for instance you want to have an area where they can I uh, maybe they can click on a button to schedule a actual photo shoot or something like that so let's go back here and I think we're gonna use another layouter for this but this time it won't include a repeater I uh, so what we'll do is we'll choose our layouters and the one that I want to use is right here because I think this will work well so once again it put it right up here so what we're gonna do is make sure we move that down so select it move down and we're gonna write our title here so a good title for this section uh, would be let's see here we're gonna double click schedule a shoot today Notice how it automatically adjusted the design to account for the fact that there's two lines. For there's a little tagline here, which you know you don't have to use all the elements. You could just click this and delete it. I'm going to choose to use it because I like it. So we're going to say ready to rock. I also want this background. See how this background color is like slightly different, and I don't like that. So I'm going to take this, change design, take the fill color and opacity, and just make this a flat white. Now this looks a little bit strange because these two these two sections, these two rows, I have the same background color. So what I can do is just change this and we'll come out here and maybe we'll use this color or maybe just something slightly lighter. Uh, it may be a little bit more into blue spectrum. Yeah, right around there. I. 
Yeah, sorry, I clicked off that. You want to make sure you hit add. There we go. All right, so now we have that new color and a good separation. Now for here, I think this would be a great um, like image uh, for the purpose of showing like the photographer or something like that. So we'll hit update. Look at that. So right here, probably want to change the text. So instead of click here, I uh, schedule now. That works very well. And again, you could change a lot about this button right here. Uh, for instance, if we want to change, I uh, let's let's do a change where we change it. I, I like the button as is, but just to show you, I think we'll do a change where I uh, will take the border, get rid of it. We'll take the background. Now white can work. That definitely works. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, I think because this is pill shaped, like with the rounded corners and this one's not, we should be consistent. So we'll just take corners and we'll increase this to like some high number. And now we have our rounded corners. Look how cool that is. And of course, because it's a layouter, responsiveness is already built into it. And again, we have to change this to down on that. And then as well, we'll do down here as well. All right, so now we could check this out and everything is uh, automatically responsive and working quite well, I must say. So we'll come out here to tablet. This still works well. This would work on a tablet. So um, the column and row structure is still maintained. And yeah, fantastic. So now you can preview it, which basically gets rid of the user interface. So you can see what it looks like without a lot of the user interface here. And then you can also go back to edit site. You can publish it as well. So when you click pub publish, you can click on view site, which will actually load it into the browser. And this is what people will see. Um, and you can also upgrade to add a custom domain so that you can go like whatever.com and then it'll show this site. For now though, this is the site URL right here, which you can copy um, and then click view site to see what it looks like in the browser. So here's the site in the actual browser and basically responds just as we would expect it to. Very, very cool stuff. All right, so I hope you really enjoyed that. Editor X, I believe, is one of the best, if not the best, visual website builder out there that I've seen so far, being that, of course, it can handle Flexbox-based layouts as well as the grid, and it's just really intuitive and quite easy to use. Um, so ultimately, make sure you check it out here in the very first link of the YouTube description below. It's free. There are some things that uh, you can upgrade on a per-site basis, but you can check that out on your own time, and yeah, as always, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.